This is the second part of our uh, exploration into particle physics. This is the um, start of quantum mechanics. Um, and the crucial thing we've got to look at in this first bit is something called a photoelectric effect. We need to go back and to a little bit of history first. So um, in 1801, Thomas Young has discovered the interference of light with his double slit experiment that you'll look at later in the year. And this was generally accepted as proof that light behaved as a wave. Okay, because two waves can meet at a point and interfere with each other, whereas two particles can't. So you can have uh, what's called superposition of waves, where a crest of a wave and a trough of a wave cancel each other out. But there's no kind of equivalent explanation for what happens with particles. Okay, so this was really final proof in the argument between Newton and Huygens about whether light was a wave or a particle. Okay, something this tells us about waves is that we know waves carry energy, and we know that the energy carried by a wave depends on the amplitude of the wave. So a large water wave might knock down a ship, a loud sound wave might damage your ears. You don't worry so much about the, f the frequency or the pitch of the wave or the frequency of the wave. Okay, what you worry about is the amplitude. But then came the photoelectric effect. Okay, hopefully you've seen the demonstration of this. It's not a very exciting demonstration, but it is a very important one. So the basic principles of this go as follows. Uh, you have a metal plate. You charge it up with static electricity with negative charges, so we've got extra electrons on this plate. Uh, you put it on a gold leaf electroscope. So this is the gold leaf here. It stands up because we've got negative charges pushed down from the gold, from the plate at the top down onto here. So these repel each other. The charges um, repel, so that tells you that it's charged. You shine a green light, for example, onto this plate, and nothing happens. So you think, well, I know light is a wave, and I know the energy in a wave depends on its amplitude. So what I need is a brighter green light. So you shine a brighter green light on it and still nothing happens. Okay, so this is the crucial part to understand really that the amplitude hasn't made any difference and it doesn't matter how bright you make that green light, it'll never knock the electrons off the surface. Okay, so what this tells us is we can't explain the photoelectric effect with a wave model of light. And this was a fairly well-known experiment at the end of the 19th century but Einstein was the person who managed to explain why this happens. And his explanation went like this. He said, what's happening with this is individual photons, particles of light, are hitting those electrons. They don't have enough energy to knock them off. So what you need is some particles with more energy, and those particles are particles of light at a higher frequency. So even a very dim blue light might knock those photons off, uh, sorry, they mark not those electrons off. And these are the particles that we call photons now. So he said that light is made of photons and that the energy of these photons depends on the frequency. So a dim blue light might knock the uh, electrons off, even though a really, really bright green light wouldn't. Okay, before you go and do any maths or anything else on the photoelectric effect, make sure you're clear about that principle because really that's the underlying fundamental part that it's all about. Okay, just a few questions to make you see if you're clear on this. So a brighter blue light, what's that going to do? Well, a brighter light means more photons per second in a particle model. So more photons per second means you knock off more electrons per second. So you'll discharge the um, metal plate faster. We kind of already know this somewhere from right back down in key stage uh, three almost. Gamma radiation, you know, is quite dangerous. Why is that? Well, there might be a lot less energy from the gamma source than there is from a light bulb, let's say, but the individual gamma rays, the gamma photons, have got much more energy than the light photons. Why is that? Well, they've got a much higher frequency. Okay, and then finally, does this prove that light is made of particles? Well, not exactly, because light still does interference as well. Okay, so you can't explain those with a the particle theory. So what we need is both theories. So this leads to the crucial idea, this idea of wave-particle duality, Okay, that light behaves as both a wave and a particle, and you need both models to explain its behavior.
Just to tidy this up with a little bit of maths, it turns out that the energy of a photon is this constant, the Planck constant H, times its frequency. The Planck constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Okay, and remember that despite the fact we're talking about the particle nature of light, we still need to remember the um, wave equation to work out what this frequency is. Okay, and that comes from the equation speed equals frequency times wavelength where we've got the speed being the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second.